you. Welcome to Dr. Vibes, a learning point. And please subscribe to the channel. Let us study the pathophysiology of septic shock in this video. Consider there is in an infection in a body. This infection will cause the release of endotoxins and exotoxins. Endotoxins are the lipopolysaccharides and the exotoxins are the proteins. Now after these endotoxins and exotoxins are released, what will happen? This will bind to the toll-like receptors which are present in your immunological cells. Then there will be activation of NFK beta. After the activation of NKF beta, there will be release of cytokines and chemokines. The cytokines are interleukin 1, 2, 4, 9, 10 and TNF alpha, TGF beta are released. Now this will lead to the features of SIRS that is Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. There is a detailed video on SIRS uploaded on this channel. You can go and watch there. Now this infection, if the magnitude of this infection rises, then there will be activation of nitric oxide synthase. Now usually when there is infection in the body, then there is vasoconstriction. But if nitric oxide synthase is produced, this will lead to the synthesis of more and more nitric oxide. Now we know that nitric oxide is a vasodilator. So this will dilate the blood vessels, leading to more release of blood in a particular area. And that will lead to warm extremities. So usually in shock, we have studied that there is cold extremities. But in case of septic shock, when there is severe infection, then that will lead to warm extremities. There is a video uploaded on this channel regarding the pathophysiology of hemorrhagic shock. You can go and watch that as well. Okay, now one question arises that how does septic shock leads to distributive shock. So if vasodilation occurs, that will lead to decrease in afterload and that will cause distributive shock. This is all about the pathophysiology of septic shock.